Today I got a brand new Aspire 5. I got to do a quick upgrade on the M.2, a quick clean install, and I'll show you how to do it. Hey guys, what's up? Dale here. Today I got to do a quick little upgrade on this brand new Acer Aspire 5. The exact model is A515-43-R19L. Um, I've done a lot of these Aspire 5s, but it seems like every one is a little different. Um, it's got the Ryzen 3. I'll have all the specs for it on the screen there. And what I'm going to do, <clears throat> or first of all, it came out of the box with just 4 gigs of DDR4 memory it's got 128 gig NVMe SSD uh, it's in Windows 10 S mode what I'm gonna do is upgrade the M.2 drive to just a 250 gig NVMe uh, Samsung Evo 970 plus um, they just want a little more storage for that part um, and I'm also gonna um, upgrade the RAM from 4 gigs to 16 gigs I got a 16 gig kit here, two sticks of 8 gig DDR4-2666. This model does have two RAM slots, doesn't have any onboard memory. Some of these do have on, onboard memory. Um, the A515-43s, there's several different variants of this. The, the last four numbers of the model number distinguish the different models. Um, so anyway, this one does have two RAM slots. We can also add a two and a half inch um, um, SATA drive, either an SSD or a mechanical hard drive, we're not doing that today. But after I put in the new parts, I'm simply going to do a clean install of Windows 10. Alright, I got interrupted there, guy. That's going to happen a lot today, probably anyway. So I'm going to do, a, I'm going to finish up after the new parts are in and do a clean install of Windows 10. I'm going to put the new 21H1. Um, if it's out of S mode after the install, great. Otherwise, I'm going to switch out of S mode. So I'm just going to get right into it, guys. I've never even turned this on. It came right out of the box. Don't need to turn it on. Got our standard 45 watt AC adapter back here. I've already removed all the screws. They're all the same length. Very easy to get to, as you can see. The uh, a number zero magn magnetic tip Phillips screwdriver should work good. Get them out. Um, I'm going to use my little plastic spudger tool here. I always put a link down below where you can buy a bag of these. I'm just going to get it into the seam somewhere along here. Usually on these, I can start along the front here. Usually, these sometimes are pretty tight, just depending. They're all a little different. But all the creaking and cracking is good, as you can see. It's, com it's coming up here, okay? Just don't yank it, because you don't want to break too many of those little plastic clips in there. But the screws hold it back on nicely, irregardless. I'm not telling you to break it, but... Be careful and also make sure you protect yourself from static discharge use an ESD wristband or a mat or both just be aware of that before you get inside and start doing anything but it should it should come up here pretty easy once we got it started here oh there it goes kind of came right off okay so we don't need that right now here's the end here's the inside Zzz, I'm kidding um, Here's our two RAM slots right here. We got currently have a 4 gig stick that I'm going to take out. Before I do anything, though, I'm going to disconnect the battery here from the motherboard. There's a little connector right here. It just slides back. They are a little stiff sometimes. Um, we can remove this tape here to give a little more wiggle room there. I just got to get this done quick, guys. I got a bunch of these to do today. So I'm going to slide that connector back out of the motherboard. Again, be careful of static electricity, all right? I'm all protected here, so I don't need to worry about it. This one actually came out pretty easy. We just want it out. That's all we need to do is get it disconnected. Hopefully you can see that, all right? But as an added precaution, now on this model, the battery has two screws holding in. Some of these models, I'll use the Spire 5s, the battery simply is just sitting there at the bottom cover holds it in place. But this one, we don't have to worry about the battery falling out. So I'm going to carefully open it. I'm going to hit the power button several times here. Get rid of any residual juice that might be in there. That should be good. Alright, so um, get right to it. I'm going to take out this 4 gig stick. Alright. 
Going to put in our, 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 our kit, our team group, Elite. It's good RAM. I use it all the time, among others. But I'm just going to put in, it's a dual rank, I believe. Should be. Yes, it is. <clears throat> put that out of the way. Again, try not to touch, sorry, Wiggledale. Try not to touch anything you absolutely don't have to. Make sure you get a good click on your RAM so you don't have to open it back up. Here's the two and a half inch mounting bay over here. It comes included with a, with a caddy and the SATA cable to connect it to the motherboard right over here by the battery. Um, you can easily slide in a two and a half inch SATA SSD or just a mechanical, mechanical hard drive if you want to pop in a one terabyte or two terabyte mechanical drive or SATA SSD you easily can. We're not doing that today. We're just going to upgrade the NVMe SSD right over here. It's a basic Western Digital um, 128 gig. Got one, one screw right here that we have to take out. Again, using our number zero Phillips screwdriver. Come, should come right out. And wiggle it out of there. These are SN550s, I believe. Well, it don't matter. So, here's our Samsung uh, 250, yeah, 970 EVO. I'm going to pop that back in place. That's where we're going to do our clean install of Windows 10 onto that guy. I'm not putting a heat shield or a thermal pad or anything like that on this model. Everyone is different, in my opinion, uh, just depending on the model. This is not... Is not it's not a gaming laptop. This laptop is going to be used for just everyday normal internet productivity, goofing around on YouTube videos, whatever. So we don't. I'm not concerned about throttling on the SSD or anything like that. The the manufacturer puts a label on here that serves as a kind of a heat spreader. Uh, there's good clearance underneath here. Um, if I threw a thermal pad on there, that's one thing, but, or you could put a copper heat sink on there of some sort along with it. I just choose on these ones to leave it just the way it is, just like the factory, factory one was. Shouldn't have any issues with throttling um, or anything like that. Again, I take these on a case-by-case case case basis. So we got the new RAM, the new SSD, we're ready for our clean install. Um, got your Wi-Fi card over here. Here's your CMOS battery. A lot of people always ask, where's the CMOS battery? It's right here, connected to the motherboard, right next to the SSD. And again, you have this bay over here. Acer gives you the mounting, everything you need to mount a two and a half inch drive over there if you wanted to, in addition to this, or, or just that, and get rid of this. Many different configurations. So, let's hook the battery back up carefully. Try not to touch anything once you do that, of course. Take my nylon tool here pop it back in securely. Just want to make sure it goes in all the way. And careful those wires, they're very tiny and thin, kind of fragile. Just want to make sure it's in all the way. Ugh. Put my tape back down. <clears throat> I'm going to put the cover back on. We look good, nice and clean, brand new. I love it. And I'm going to snap this in, but I'm not going to screw it put the screws back in just yet. I'm going to wait till I have a good clean install and I know everything's all right because you never know. So I always wait. So I'm just going to simply open it up, plug in my power cord, boot up our USB bootable flash drive with Windows 10 on it to install. You can download the Windows media creation tool to make one of these. You have to have an 8 gig flash drive or bigger. I got the 21H1 that I'm going to install. Just pop it in a USB port, hit the power button, <clears throat> and I'm going to get right into the BIOS. It, it might take might take some time for it to post because of the new RAM and the SSD, but mainly the RAM. It's reading or training the RAM. That's very normal on any laptop or any computer when you put in new RAM. It's there it goes. So I'm going to go into the BIOS here. I don't know why you can see that. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to use my arrow key and tab over to um, where it says main. I'm going to go down where it says F12 boot menu. It's disabled. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to enable the F12 boot menu just in case I need it. Exit saving changes. It should default to that drive, uh, but it's easier. Honestly, I just use F12. That's why I turned it on. Right there is our Corsair. 
Voyager SSD that it's trying to boot off of. So we're going to do that. Kind of at a funny angle here, guys, so forgive me. But it's booting off the flash drive. It's going to, like I said, get a quick install of Windows 10. Hit next for United States. Install now. That M.2 SSD, any size would work. It had the 128. I put in a 250. You can go 256, 512, 500, 1 terabyte, 2 terabyte even if you wanted to. But this isn't a high performance computer. It's just going to be for regular use. Like I said, there's our only installed drive, the Samsung. Hit next and let it copy the files over. And once this is all done, we'll walk through the setup real quick, get into Windows and we should be good to go. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. Once this is done, I don't want to bore you with this. All right, guys, we've got all the files copied over. We're good to go. You can take out your flash drive after it reboots the first time we're, we're done with that. So I'm going to choose my region, which is the United States. Your keyboard is set to... Skip the additional keyboard layouts. Cortana, you're getting sassy today. Now Again. let's get you connected to a network. Ugh. Okay, here I always choose I don't have internet. That way Microsoft isn't going to force me to set up, create a Microsoft account. You can do all that later. Just want to get into Windows. Type what you want to name your account. Just put user. No password. Just going to be a local account, which is fine. With no login password. I leave when you're ready. I leave location turned on. Again, you can turn all this stuff off. On or off. Customize it any, any way you want later. Hey, look. Not now for Katana. <clears throat> Almost uh, done now. We just need to get a few more things polished up for you, and Windows will be all yours. Not a big look fan of Cortana. Sorry. So we'll let it get into Windows here real quick. It shouldn't take too long. I'll just bore you with my talking. Um, check out some of my other videos. I got several playlists. Lots of different videos on these type of upgrades. Cloning, if you had data on here, you could have easily cloned this. Many different ways to do it. <clears throat> yeah, but it's surprising how many different variations of this, the same laptop there are. This one has the Ryzen 3. Um, some, some will have onboard memory in one slot. Some will have onboard memory no slot. This one has two RAM slots with no onboard memory. But they all have the two and a half inch expansion bay and Acer always includes the uh, mounting hardware. The Ryzen versions, they put it inside. The Intel versions of these Aspire 5s, they have it in the box. So don't throw away your box. But I just have to get this done. Guys, I have to do several of these yet today. Appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. All right, great, we're, we're here. So I'm gonna get into Windows real quick. <clears throat> Don't care about anything right now. I'm not connected to the internet. I go here to start and go to settings. You can see it's already activated. It's probably still gonna be an SMO because of Windows 10. Oh, look at that, it's Windows 10 Home. It took me out of SMO without having to do anything. Just with the clean install, it switched me from SMO to Windows 10 Home which is what we wanted, the 21 H1 edition. There's our 16 gigs of memory, no problem. You can also open up Task Manager. This thing's gonna be pretty snappy now with the upgrades that we did. There's our 16 gigs of RAM, okay? Oh, that's the other thing too. Um, I put in 2666 memory. Uh, this model, these Ryzen 3s only support 2400 megahertz. There's no way to to overclock it or anything like that. That's fine. Uh, sometimes the manufacturer will put in 3200, 2400, 2666. So it's just going to clock it down to a little bit slower speed. But again, on a laptop like this, it's not, not that big a deal. Still got 16 gigs of good memory. Just popping through this stuff here. There's our Samsung. 250 gig M.2 SSD. All right, guys, that was a quick little easy upgrade. I'll button it up, put all the screws back in it, uh, get all the updates, drivers, and get it ready for the customer. 
Thanks for watching. If you like it, give me a like. If you loved it, go ahead and click on sub. Even try the notification bell so you can get notified when I upload a new video. Y'all, thanks. Uh, Y'all have a great, uh, great, a great day. <laughs>